Today we're going to get started loading up the Vigal Bone Black and we'll go through the electronics for the uh, matrix panels. So what I have here is a Raspberry Pi and this is the Beagle Bone Black. They are both single board computers, but today we're working with the Beagle Bone Black. It's very similar in setup as far as how you get this thing started. So there's the card right there, the, uh, the flash card. Uh, it, you format it with SD formatter just like you do on the Pi. But instead of just copying the contents of a directory to this, you actually have an image that you have to write. There is, there's a couple of utilities you can use on the Mac. There is the DD, I think it's disk dump. I don't know if that's it for sure, but DD utility you can use on the command line. And that's what I have and that's what I use. I believe there's also a GUI utility you can use on the Mac. On Windows, there's probably a GUI utility. I don't know what that is because I don't have a Windows machine. What you do, these are, there's a push button right here and there's two push buttons right here. There's an LED over here and there's four LEDs right here. So basically you hold this push button down that's nearest the flash drive, hold that down, apply power, and it will fire the thing up. Now since it's an image, the load time is pretty quick. It's maybe a couple of minutes. I, um, one of the things, the, uh, this is a HDMI output port. However, with the Falcon player images, we have to disable this because we need to use all of these GPIO ports. So on the, on the Pi, we have one connector, sorry for the light. We have one connector for the GPIO ports on the Pi. On the BeagleBone, there are two uh, connectors for the GPIO ports, and we need to use all of those for the Octo Scroller, which I'll show you in just a minute. One thing I want to mention about the image for this, uh, if you look on the GitHub website, there is a 1.5 BeagleBone Black image. That one is a little out of date. Dan Culp has produced some images that, are, that have the newer software, newer operating system and that is the recommended install image for these BeagleBone Blacks. I, it actually corrected a few problems that I was having with the panels. So we've got this Octo Scroller here that takes the output from the GPIO pins. You can, these are connectors for the panel. It will only go on one way. So if you try to put this here, it just doesn't work. So make sure the slot is near the ethernet port and I will attempt this on camera. Make sure we get the pins in there before we go to really squeezing well. Let's see, it looks like they're all in there. And we're in. This is a power connector and this is how I will be powering. It supplies power for the Octo Scroller and for the BeagleBone Black. So you just have one connection to your power supply there. As you can see from this image, you can't really tell which connectors are which. This is J1234. Uh, I believe this is 5678. I have a picture. Each one of these outputs will drive eight panels. So you can have a total of 64 panels off this one BeagleBone Black and Octo Scroller. I have four panels, so it's not going to be a big deal. I'll just be using one output. This is a matrix panel that most of us use. It measures 320 by 160 millimeters or one foot five eight by about six and a quarter inches for those of us in the United States. The LEDs in these panels, there's 10 millimeter spacing between all these panels. So that's why it's a P10 panel. You can get P4 to P20 for commercial applications. These are P10s. It's pretty decent size for what we need. There's the input connector. Here's the output connector for chaining more panels together. Here's the power injection port. That's it for this whole panel. So they are pretty simple to connect up. Here's the instructions that I got that came with the kit. So I had to do a little searching on the internet to find out how to hook these up because I've never done it before. But it's pretty simple once you've gone through it once. So let's put this thing together and we'll see what it looks like. One thing I did want to mention about these panels, pay special attention to these arrows.
So real quickly, here is the matrix that I have set up. It's got all four panels in there. I'm starting on 7233 because my wall washers on 72 ends on 7232. It really doesn't matter. You can start whatever channel you want. But what I did do is if you, you can define several universes to use and you can group them together as one. So that's what I've done here. It doesn't matter. You can just list them out separately if you want. The panels are 16 pixels high and with four of them hooked together it's 128 across. Start on top left. So now if we go over to the Falcon setup, the first thing you want to do is set up all your universes in here. You do not have to check this off, but if you set them up you can go into bridge mode which means you can output directly from X lights to the matrix panel. We'll talk about that in a second. The configuration is not on this BBB page, but on the LED panels page. Remember those arrows I was talking about? Those are all pointing up on all four of my panels. I'm going from output one on all of these, and we just have them set up for P1, P2, P3, and P4. If I had all eight, I would keep going further out this way. So basically you enable the LED panel output. So this is new in the newer Dan Culp images and I highly suggest you get those. I was having a problem with one, every other line was blanked out until I updated uh, to this version of the software. You pick which configuration you're in. So I'm in four wide by one high. Uh, you can see it's all different kinds of configurations here, however you have it set up. I'm using the 32 by 16 panel using 8th scan. My panels are RBG, not RGB. And I just put in the start channel. So start channel 7233, three. start channel 7233. Three. It's got 6144. So basically we've got 512 pixels per panel times three channels, or excuse me, times four panels is 2048, times three channels is 6144. So that's where that number comes from. So if you go to the, if you change this to bridged mode, then you can output directly from X lights. So I just have a little thing here. Let's make it move. We'll output to the panel. Let me show you what that looks like. I don't know if this is a problem just by doing it this way, but you can see it. The <laughs> it kind of looks a little messed up. It looks really messed up, actually. If I don't output from X lights and I go directly from go back into standalone mode and I actually play a file. That actually looks a lot better. With the sign that I'm building, I actually wanted to break this panel up into two. And I wanted to make sure that these two panels are treated as one and these two panels are treated as one in the software because I wanted patterns like that to work correctly. Otherwise they would just show up in the center two panels. But now I can do patterns on either side. Of course I've got, that one looks the same, but these show up correctly on both sides. So the way I did that is I defined a sub model in, in here and used the sub buffer option. And so I just chose this half to be the left side and, and this half to be the right side. I did have to play with these a little bit to get it exactly right. But now anytime that I go, uh, I can do the left side and the right side, at least any patterns that I do will look correct. So the arrows on these two panels are pointing down. The arrows on these two panels are pointing up. This is the one that is connected to the octo scroller. So this is going to be P1, P2, P3, 
P3 and P4. I've just got it daisy chained off of here. So these, these are upside down, these are right side up. That's my two by two horizontal configuration. So in Falcon Player, I have it P1, P2, those panels are pointing down, P3, P4, those two panels are pointing up. And I don't think I've saved anything or changed anything, but just to be sure, we will change this and restart. And I am going to go in bridge mode. So let's go over to X lights. Now in X lights, I have this horizontal. Uh, this is for this setup here. So it's horizontal. Uh, 32 strings, 32 strings this way, 64 strings that way. So it's 32, 64, I'm starting top left. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Let's output. Okay, well it kind of looks like that. <laughs> like I say, the colors are off in bridge mode, but that's okay, this is just for testing. Just to demonstrate to myself that I understood how these panels worked, I wanted to turn all the panels 90 degrees, in other words, vertical, and do this same experiment. This is where I was running into all my issues. So I have set up this model as a horizontal model, it doesn't matter. So this 64 pixels high here, 32 pixels across here. So there's one, two, three, four panels. I've got text overlaid. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why this got so big. I've got text overlaid over a fan. So this is what it's supposed to look like on the panels. If I output to the panels, the color is off a little bit. The text is a little weird, but it's working properly. In other words, it is doing, it is showing the pattern that I wanted it to show. I've got a fan and I've got text overlaid on top of it. The text is scrolling across the middle properly. The fan is spinning. It does look a little funky, but that's test mode. So the way this should be set up is the arrows pointing out. I've got P1, P2, P3, and P4. When I do that, I get a really weird looking pattern. So let me show you what that looks like. This is what it looks like when I set it up correctly. It looks like the panels are switched. The text isn't matching up anymore. Same file, same configuration, setting it incorrectly. And that is what I get. As far as I know, these panels are operating completely differently than expected. So don't follow this as an example. Um, <laughs> I'll try and find out what's going on and let you know in a future episode if I do. So that's about it for this week. I think these panels look really cool on a display and I'm looking forward to working on the enclosure this week. I hope you found some of this information useful. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. And all the dogs run. There's so many cars going back.